as good as mine. But you also said that in this family we shouldn't compete with each other. I was wrong again. <laughs> Hi. Oh. Hi, honey. Mm. Notice anything different on the refrigerator? Tommy took down the coupon for a free lube job. <laughs> no, I got an A on my psychology test. You didn't throw away the coupon, did you? Here is your stupid coupon. Hey, Randy. Hey, When is Michelle coming over? Any minute now. I hope her dad gets here quick. Old Bert's gonna be put on the independent suspension on the hot rod. Oh, well, that's good because a dependent suspension can be so needy. <laughs> In my psychology class, I would have gotten a huge laugh. And yet, here in the kitchen, Death. Here. So, you and Michelle have been seeing a lot of each other lately. I guess. I think she really likes you. What do you think? I think I don't want to talk about this with my mother. Oh, come on. Sorry, Mom. I'm past the age where you give me a cookie and I spill my guts. I love those days. Hey, look, look, look. I've got chocolate, chocolate chip. Give it up, Mom. Well, at least I still have more. Oh, hey, honey, you want a cookie? Forget it. I'm not spilling my gas. <laughs> In the carpool, she started singing this weird song, Do I Diddy? Yeah. Must have been from when she was a teenager in the 30s. <laughs> That's nothing. Remember the seventh grade dance, the chaperone who started doing the funky chicken with the principal? <laughs> oh man, you got the funky chicken, Mom? <laughs> there he goes, just a walking down the street, singing Do I Diddy 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 Dum Diddy Do. Your mom is weirder. <laughs> Snapping his fingers and shuffling his feet, singing do a diddy diddy dum diddy. Hey, mom. Diddy, look, diddy, mom. Look, what? We're gonna head on over to the mall. You want a ride? No thanks. We can do a diddy without one. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you decide on an engine yet? You gonna go with the big block? No, nope, decided on a flathead. Flathead? Taylor, you are an animal. Just as I have you pegged as a big block guy, you surprise me with a flathead. Well, I like to keep you on your toes, Bert. Usually you're dropping things on them. <laughs> Don't quit your day job, okay? <laughs> All right, let's do the racket pin in and try to get to the brakes if you can. Okay. I'm really glad we're doing this today. Yeah, you like how with the tool man, huh? Yeah, well, especially when my in-laws are visiting. <laughs> in there. Dana, she really gets crazy when her parents are around not as crazy as my wife, boy. When her parents come to visit, she's a psycho. <laughs> and they're not running all cylinders. They're like a couple pistons shy of a V8, if you know what I mean. What do you mean, Sam? <laughs> Honey, I'm... Bert was telling me how crazy his wife was, and I want to make him feel a little better, so I made up stories about your wonderful understanding, lovely parents. <laughs> I'm sure Bert didn't say his wife was crazy. Yes, I did. <laughs> Dana, she's a total nutcase when her parents are around. She spends the whole time trying to make her daddy happy. Whoa. I sense a little hostility there. Well, she lets him run her entire life. You know, he's a vet, so she became a vet. Yeah? What branch? Army, Navy, what? <laughs> Animal. You know, 
Bert, I was just reading something about this. Maybe your wife hasn't individuated from her father. Individuated? No, 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 no. <laughs> Honey, I told you a million times, psychology has no place in the garage, just like a car does not belong on a shrink's couch. Okay. Unless the car is in denial and has a big block to work through. <laughs> That would have killed in psychology class. And yet, here in the garage, death. Can we get back to this individuated thing? What is that? It's a two-hour discussion. It'll suck the life out of you. It's an over-attachment to one's parents that continues through adulthood. Here we go. Is your wife an only child by any chance? Yeah, as a matter of fact, she is. Well, then... Could be a classic case. Really? Yeah. You know, if this is a problem in your relationship, you really should talk with your wife about it. Oh, I, I don't know. I brought it up before, and every time it ends up in a big fight, maybe I should just leave well enough alone, huh? That's good advice for anyone, Jill. <laughs> Avoidance is never a good idea. Really? <laughs> maybe we should talk more about this. Sure. You want a cookie? <laughs> Yeah. You know how I used to be so cool in junior high? No. <laughs> well, I was. But now that I'm in high school, I'm nobody. Well, here comes Mom. Uh, why don't you grab a cookie and talk to her about it? <laughs> I'd rather talk to the cookie. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dana. Bert's wife? I'm just here to pick him up. Oh, come on in. It's so nice to meet you. Bert was just talking about you. Nothing bad, I hope. <laughs> oh, no, good, 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 good. Good, good, good. All right, let's bolt on that sway bar. Now, we would have been at this job an hour and a half ago had you not spent most of the time in the kitchen with Mrs. Freud. Yeah. <laughs> this is my husband, Tim. Tim, this is Dana, Bert's wife. Hi. Hi, nice to meet good you. Good to meet you. You ready to go, hon? We're just getting started in this front stabilizer bar. Oh, I'm sorry, but we got to pick up Michelle at the mall and meet Mom and Dad. You know, they really want to make the early bird dinner. Great. Another night of your dad telling that stupid joke. Hey, Bert, how about an early Bert dinner? <laughs> Boy, that's not very funny, is it? That'd be a lot less funny if uh, your name were Bob. Um, well, we'll finish up later. Well, I'm so sorry that having dinner with my father is such torture for you. <laughs> well, it is. And it's all because you haven't individuated from your father. <laughs> what? Jill, she explained the whole thing to me. Uh, how your over-attachment to your father is poisoning our marriage. You know, I think that Tim was wrong about that early Bert joke. Yeah, I'd just be as funny with Bob. Well, what about an early Bob dinner? Funny, funny stuff. Bob dinner? <laughs> Would you talk about our private life with a stranger? For your information, Dana, Jill happens to be a highly respected psychologist. <laughs> well, uh, technically, I, I'm not a psychologist. Well, technically, what are you? Technically, the word that you would best use to describe me would be... A psychology student. A student? Uh, but a, a very promising, highly respected student. I thought you were a teacher. You, you criticize me based on something a student said? I didn't know she was a uh, student. Mm. And your, your, your problems must be pretty obvious if a stupid student can recognize them. Yeah. Well, for the record, I should tell you I just got an A on my last test. <laughs> hmm. Now, I'm guessing, honey, that the psychology test, the A, was based on some sort of curve? <laughs> I think what I did was so terrible. I was just trying to get Bert to open up the lines of communication. Which is exactly why I've told you over and over again, communication is a bad thing. <laughs> it can lead to nothing but disaster. This is not a disaster. Oh, really? Then why did Bert and Dana run out ever yelling at one another? 
they were just expressing some strong feelings. I'm sure they're going to calm down, they'll have a nice rational discussion, and their relationship will be healthier for it. Hey, Randy. How was them all? Wild. When Michelle's parents came to pick her up, they had a huge fight. Was it a healthy, rational sort of thing? <laughs> no, it was more of a screaming, I can't believe I married you sort of thing. <laughs> Right in the food court, the falafel guy had to restrain Michelle's mom. <laughs> oh, my God, what have I done? I've ruined two lives. Let me think about this. I would guess that in a psychology class, your advice would have been huge. And yet, here in a garage with real people, death. <laughs> Guard Taylor Act. You know you fence. Oh, Judith loves the sport, and I find that a little sword play puts her in the mood to parry and thrust. <laughs> so, I guess you and Judith are still a hot iron. Oh, yes, indeed. I find the embers are still glowing. You know, I've taken quite a fancy to your former psychology professor. Oh, that is so good. I mean, I'm glad that I helped nurture one relationship, because mm -hmm. last night in the garage, I destroyed another one. Oh, not Tim and Bird, I hope. Oh, no, no, that relationship still has a new car smell. <laughs> no, this is the relationship between Bert and his wife. I really need some advice. Well, rattle my saber, good neighbor. Okay. I was... Oh, Judith, hi. Hello, Jill. I am so glad you're here. I need to talk to you. Well, I thought you wanted to talk to me. Oh, that's okay, Wilson. Oh, well, fine. I'll just go over here and thrust and parry by my lawsuit. So, Judith... Last night, I talked to a friend of Tim's, and in five minutes, I may have ended a 20-year marriage. What on earth did you say? I just made the obvious assessment that his wife was in denial about her ability to individuate from her father. And you came up with this diagnosis after meeting her for only five minutes? Actually, at that point, I had never met her. <laughs> uh, Jill, one of the first rules of psychology is first you meet, then you treat. I know, I know. I was just uh, overzealous. But what do I do now? Well, I'm reminded of a 5th century Indian book, the Pakatantra, which says the first mark of intelligence is not to start things. So I shouldn't do anything. But the Pakatantra goes on to say the second mark of intelligence is to pursue to the end what you have started. Well, actually, Judith, I was just about to finish that quote. So I should go and apologize to them. I'm sorry, I thought you'd finished. I was merely pausing for the effect. The effect was it seemed like you'd finished, dear. Well, I hadn't, dear. <laughs> Um, when couples bicker the way that you're doing right now, sometimes I find that it's useful <laughs> for me to just say bye bye. Now, where you been? We're I, supposed to do a show here. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm late. It's just I've been turtle sitting. Turtle sitting? Yes. Meet Mother's turtle scooter. Hi, scooter. Yeah. Looks just like her. <laughs> Took a little softer skin. She's not feeling well. She didn't eat her lettuce last night for dinner. Well, maybe she had a salad for lunch. <laughs> no, I think she's depressed because she's separated from mother. She should talk to Jill. Probably hasn't been individuated. Is she an only turtle? I'm serious, Tim. Al, we're doing tool time, not turtle time, okay? Here we go, guys. Stand by. All right, where's your trowel? Uh, it's in the truck. Well, get it. Put Scooter someplace where you can see me during the show. Okay, I'll get her her own monitor. Stand by. In. Five, four, three, two. Welcome to a special live tool time with your hosts, Tim Taylor and Al Borland. Thank you, Heidi, and welcome to Tool Time. Today, Al and I are at our project house, and we're going to show you how to lay a brick walkway. Now, the first thing you want to do is pick out your brick pattern. So you just go to your bridal registry at your local brickyard. <laughs> Today, we're going with the classic basket weave. All right, this section, we've already laid a concrete slab using Binford's quick-dry cement. This will be a perfect foundation for our brick pavers. That's right. Gary, if you want to come in here, this is going to dry very fast, so you want to quickly use your trowel to smooth it out. While Al does that, I'll compact and level the next section using Binford's 6100 Power Compactor. Uh, uh, uh. Normally, you, 
wouldn't use a power compactor on a job this small, but Tim's not normal. <laughs> Don't talk to me about normal, turtle nanny. <laughs> Cement, and then you nearly kill us speeding over here. Sorry I had such a heavy foot. <laughs> I should never have let you drive. Scooter is now shell-shocked. Dana, when I said your father was obnoxious and overbearing, I meant it in a nice way. Not in the office, Bert. Hey, Bert, what are you doing here? Kim, it's Dana's office. Your GTO is out front. I saw it. Yeah. Looking great. <laughs> Thanks. I just got a detail. Uh, I got this great Excuse guy. me. Can we cut the chit-chat? I have a turtle in crisis. <laughs> what happened to your turtle? Oh, he got into some, with some real bad reptiles. They put him in a cement overcoat. We're investigating right now. I think she'll be fine. Let's put her in the back and soak it. I, I want Scooter to have the best of everything. You know, your finest lettuce, her, her own television. She likes to watch the Ninja Turtles. Tim, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Well, I came to talk to Dana. Oh, no. Nice foot. <laughs> is this where you come when the emergency room is filled up? Well, that's not a bad idea. Dana. Oh, Dana. I really need to talk to you. I'm sorry. I'm a little busy right now. I'm so sorry. I feel so terrible about what happened. I gave Bert advice that was unsolicited and unqualified. Not to mention, uninteresting. <laughs> I should never have gotten involved. I am not going to say another word, I promise. Good. After I say this, teensy weensy one more little thing. Oh. I think I'm going to individuate myself away from this conversation. <laughs> we'll see how that little turtle's doing. Scooter. Scooter. Look, um, before you do anything rash, I hope that you'll consider talking to somebody first. Not me. I mean, you know, somebody who actually has her degree. Well, I think we've gone just about as far as we can go with a student. Look, if you want to talk to somebody, and, and only if you really both want to, I know a woman who's sensitive and incredibly qualified. Well, it might not be a bad idea. What do you think, Dana? I suppose we could give her a call. She's great. You'll love her. In fact, she was my teacher. I think we'll find our own person. <laughs> We'll be back in a minute. She's got some stuff to do. What you doing, breaking up another marriage? <laughs> you found out she was the cause of the problem between Bert and Dana? Oh, yeah. It's all over school. Don't go to Randy Taylor's house. His mom will split up your parents. <laughs> well, they're not getting split up. Your mom went and apologized. And it looks like they're going to try to work things out. Well, that's great. But I still don't get it. Why is mom starting fights in other people's families? Uh, my guess is that starting fights here has just become too easy for her. Why does she always have to open her big mouth? Hey, 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 you don't talk about your mom like that. You know why she opens her big mouth? She likes to solve problems, you know. She's not the type of person that will sit on the sidelines. How do we get her to be one of those people? Never <laughs> well, besides, you know, helping other people solve their problems is not a bad thing. You know, the best way to get people to work out the difficulties is to talk about it. Hi. Hi. I need to talk. Oh, no. no. <laughs> he just said talking's a good thing. He did? I meant about cars, that sort of thing, sports, anything like that, you know? You know what my problem is? No, but I bet we're going to talk about it. <laughs> I am the kind of person 
who is so eager to fix things that I don't take my time and then they just blow up in my face. You married the right guy. <laughs> This whole thing with Bert and Dana has got me doubting what kind of a therapist I'm going to be. Well, you keep giving advice like you gave them. You better adopt some kind of refund policy. <laughs> now, come on. Seriously. Do you guys think that I'm the kind of person to go into psychology? As a patient or a doctor? <laughs> well, there's my answer. Come on, kidding around. Don't be so hard on yourself. You're going to make a great therapist. Thanks, I guess. I really don't want to talk about it. Uh-uh. You don't want any unresolved issues. You got to talk about it. I'll get the cookies. I get some milk. I'll get the cookies. You get the milk. Today's tool time is a rousing salute. A semi gloss and gloss later. But first, on a personal note, I would like to thank our Tool Time audience for their generous outpouring of concern for Scooter the Turtle. We were both overwhelmed by the amount of cards and flowers that you all sent. Unfortunately, because of Scooter's sugar allergies, he was not allowed to eat the chocolate that you sent. Didn't stop you and your mom from scarfing all that stuff down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a warm welcome back for Scooter, the fully recovered turtle. <laughs> Little Scooter remembers me. Do you remember? <laughs> ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Obviously, he does remember you. <laughs> Scooter, release. Oh. Oh. You know. <laughs> what is your name? <laughs> Bert. Early Bert Dinner. Bert. I started to say Mark. Okay. As in Ernie. You know, lately, Ju uh, Judith, it seems like you're always interrupting me. It seems you always I have... don't. Well, do, 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 you did that then. <laughs> Are we still on? Was it a technical problem? <laughs> 